Hello Virgo and welcome to your monthly horoscope for March. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the key strands to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail all the key dates and influences that are going to impact on your sign in particular. Now this month begins with a glorious alliance between the Sun and Jupiter, the planet of plenty, the planet of growth, the planet in traditional astrology of fortune. But they're collaborating in your seventh house. That's where we relate to others. It's the pivot point between our needs and how we receive and interact with other people. So Jupiter is a feel good factor and that's awesome to have right at the start of the month, but also there is a full moon in your sign on the 18th. But Jupiter supports that as well. If you're unfortunate to be in a relationship that isn't working quite as well, Jupiter's asking you to talk to people to find out different strategies that you may adopt. This doesn't have to be around a romantic relationship only. But generally, Jupiter's bringing a sense of positivity to your month. The other key detail for you personally is that Mercury, your ruler, makes its way through three zodiac signs. Firstly, Aquarius, but it does jag with Saturn on the second, and then it moves into your opposite sign on the 10th, and then into Aries on the 27th. So a breathtaking ride for the winged messenger who's really sprinting through this month. So. Please stay with me as I tell you more. But if you are new to my channel, I'd be honored if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Every time I drop a video, you'll get an alert. Also, if you'd like to get your free written daily horoscope from me, fire to your device each morning. You can do so for free by subscribing underneath this video. I've written these for over 25 years and it would be lovely to have you with me. Finally, if you'd like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and understand what the next year will hold for you based on your personal birth data, so personal natal astrology, you can take advantage of my special package uh, for forecast and a character analysis and get 30% off by seeing the link below. This uh, will help you to understand how the moving planets of the sky are interacting with the natal planets you were given when you were born. So it's very different from sun sign astrology and please see the link below too. Hello Virgo and welcome to your monthly horoscope for March. So this is an awesome month, one which is showcased by that new moon on the 2nd, which sees the sun aligning with Jupiter, but they are very closely in contact for the first nine days and even beyond, to be honest. Jupiter is about hope, but it's also about possibilities. It's about being adventurous. The seventh house is where we reach that tipping point between our needs and the contact we have with others, the descendant. So it can be about how we relate, but it can be about how we compete. We don't necessarily have to compete to, to the point where someone else doesn't get what they need, but just to make the most of what we've got to offer in our collaborations with others. So this is very much a, a tone of collaboration. And also because you have just a fantastic link between Venus, Mars and Pluto on the third, Pluto is obviously very transformational and deep and passionate, but this combination of Venus and Mars in your fifth house, which has been bringing the potential for great romance or passion or creativity to the fore over the last three weeks, well, that really reaches a very sweet point in that conjunction with Pluto. So if there is somebody who enters your world at the start of this month that you are really uh, drawn to in a more romantic way and there is that fantastic sense of magnetism which is so important then it could be a tie that's going to stick around but equally for those people in a relationship well Mercury your ruler connects with Saturn at the beginning of this month for the first three days and that could make you more focused on the bit you're not or the bits that you're not quite so satisfied with because Mercury and Saturn can see us 
a look at a little bit on the less bright side of things, whereas the sun, Jupiter and the new moon is asking us to think the best of people. But I think your natural ability to probe down to what's absolutely at the nub of any situation is a gift. Why should you give up on that gift? But maybe you will have to be realistic about the prospects. Maybe it's a job that you're applying for, but it's a creative association. And it's only right that you can showcase the talents that you have in a very precise manner and people will appreciate that. So it could work out that way. But I have to say that uh, Mercury conjunct Saturn can make us look a little bit on the downside. But then Venus and Mars are moving on the 6th into the sign of Aquarius, which is very much in keeping with the 6th house of your situation, with the core values of your sign, about being productive, hard-working, disciplined, well-ordered, uh, uh, grappling with those meticulous details in such a polished and accomplished way. But Venus, of course, is about our uh, desire to uh, receive goodnesses, and Mars is more about our instant drive to make those uh, 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 things that we really want happen very quickly. So there's an urgency with Mars, but an allure with Venus. But the combination in your sixth house it's not the most uh, groovy and sexy part of a chart, but if you're single, it could be through your work that you do come into contact with someone that you like. But I will tell you that if you're in a relationship that's been ongoing, however much you want to think the best of it, and with your ruler Mercury moving on the 10th, which is going to reinforce your ability to be a bit more detached and open-minded about uh, you know, receiving dialogue backwards and forwards in all sorts of ties, by the middle of this month, Venus and then Mars go into a very corrosive and abrasive right angle with Uranus, which is in your sector of freedoms. So if you're doing more than somebody else, whether it's a colleague, a partner, um, or perhaps even a family member, and it's really impinging on your ability to have time for yourself, I think you're going to be much more strident about asserting that that's not good enough. And this could all come up to the ball on the 18th with the full moon in your sign. But this will only happen if there's very unsatisfactory relationships because Jupiter's are supporting the full moon as well as the new moon. So how good is that? But then we have on the 20th, the spring equinox. This is the start of the Western Tropical Zodiac, which is predicated on the four cardinal quadrants and starts with Aries. Then we have the summer solstice with Cancer, the autonomal equinox with Libra, and then we have the winter solstice with the sign of Capricorn. So this is the start of a new 13-week period. And for you, you go from the, uh, a time of conversation and the potential to meet people in the middle but then now you want to find out whether they're really going to deliver. So it's not what people say, it's what they really mean. It's their intent. The eighth house dives deep. It's much more scorpionic, whereas the seventh house is much more Libran. So here, once Mercury, your ruler, joins on the 27th, you become much more concerned with things like business, finance, investment, uh, probate, insurances, mortgages, all that kind of stuff at a practical level. It's an emotional level, it's where you're most devoted. If a relationship makes its way from the uh, wonderful electric connections that are possible at the start of March into something more substantive towards the end of this month, if someone comes into your world for the new, it's really going to be a relationship that is going to stick around, I feel. If it has been something that's been very pleasurable and fun and flirty, but doesn't have the substance to really stick around, you're going to find out about that from the time of that spring equinox. So this is a month when you have a glorious opportunity to work collaboratively with others. But that doesn't mean to say that you should do all the giving or all the getting. It's about finding that pivot point between give and get. And if you're not getting that sweet point right, I think once Mars clashes with Uranus, you're going to speak out. And you're going to speak out in quite 
a strident way to let people know that that is not acceptable. It's been a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care and goodbye for now.